this video we're talking about related rates and in this particular problem we've been told that air is being pumped into a spherical balloon such that its volume, the volume of the balloon, is increasing by 400 cubic centimeters per second and then we've been asked how fast is the radius of the balloon increasing when the radius is 100 centimeters. So with any related rates problem you want to just get a general sense of the information that you've been given. So we've been given information about the volume, we've also been given information about the radius. So what we want is a formula that relates the volume and the radius together. And we know that the formula for the volume of a sphere is V volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed where r is the radius. So this is an equation that relates the volume of the sphere to the radius of a sphere. Therefore since we have information about the volume and radius of the sphere this is going to be the equation we want to use. Let's look at what information we've been given. So we've been told that volume is increasing by 400 cubic centimeters per second. So in other words the rate of change of the volume is positive 400 cubic centimeters per second. When we talk about the rate of change or how fast something is increasing or how fast something is decreasing, volume by itself is V. The rate at which volume is changing we call dV over dt which means the rate at which the volume is changing with respect to time and time we denote with this t here. So this is just the rate of change of the volume or the derivative of the volume with respect to time. So we say that dv dt is going to be equal to 400 cubic centimeters per second. We've also been told that in this question here that the radius is 100 centimeters. So the point in time that we're interested in at that particular moment, the radius is 100 centimeters. So we can say the radius is 100 centimeters. And what have we been asked for? How fast is the radius increasing? In other words, how fast is the radius changing? And just like we did here, how fast the radius is changing, we can call dr over dt or the rate of change of the radius with respect to time, how fast the radius is changing with respect to time. So this is what we need to figure out. We need to solve for dr over dt. So how do we use this information in relation to our volume formula? Well, what we're going to do is use implicit differentiation to take the derivative of this volume formula. And this is always going to be our process with related rates problems. What we're going to do is take the derivative of both sides of the equation. So because we're using implicit differentiation, when we take the derivative of v with respect to v, the derivative of just a single variable like this is 1. But then because we're using implicit differentiation, we have to multiply by dv over dt. So whenever you use implicit differentiation to take the derivative, you treat each variable as the variable you're taking the derivative with respect to, but then you have to multiply by the rate of change of that same variable. So the derivative of v would just be 1, but then we have to multiply by dv over dt. So that's the derivative of the left-hand side. The derivative of the right-hand side will keep the 4 thirds pi, because 4 thirds and pi are both just constant. So 4 thirds times pi is just a constant. Taking the derivative of r cubed with respect to r, we would just use power rule and we would say 3r squared. But then we have to multiply by dr over dt. Now we'll go ahead and simplify. 1 times dv over dt on the left just gives us dv over dt. On the right hand side we're going to get 3 in the denominator to cancel with 3 in the numerator and that's just going to leave us with 4 pi r squared times dr over dt. So now here's what we've been told. We know that dv over dt is 400 centimeters cubed per second. So we can make a substitution instead of dv over dt, call this 400 centimeters cubed over seconds, 400 centimeters cubed per second. That's going to be equal to 4 pi. We've been told that the radius is 100 centimeters, so we can plug in 100 centimeters and we're going to square that because we have r squared here and then we have dr over dt and we just want to go ahead and leave that in because dr over dt of course is what we're trying to solve for so we have dr over dt. Now all we want to do is get dr over dt by itself since that's what we're trying to solve for. So what we'll do is simplify this value right here, the 4 pi times the 100 centimeters squared. Well, 100 centimeters squared is going to be 10,000 centimeters squared so we'll call this 10,000 centimeters squared. When we multiply that by 4 pi, what we're going to get is 40,000 pi centimeters squared. Now we can just divide both sides by 40,000 pi centimeters squared and that will get dr over dt by itself. So we're going to end up with dr 
over dt is going to be equal to 400 centimeters cubed. We've got seconds here in the denominator, so we'll put that with what we're dividing by here. So we'll have 40,000 40,000 pi centimeters squared, and then we also have seconds here in the denominator. Now we just want to go ahead and simplify. You can see we can cancel two zeros here, and now we have 4 over 400, or 1 over 100. So dr over dt is going to be equal to 1 over 100 in the denominator here. We're also going to have centimeters squared cancel here with the centimeters cubed, leaving us with just a single centimeter in the numerator. So what we're going to have is 1 over 100 pi, and then we have centimeters and second. So what we can say then is that the rate of change of the radius, the rate of increase of the radius with respect to time, that the radius is increasing at a rate of 1 over 100 pi centimeters per second.